Krishna, 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 hey. Hare Krishna Maharaj, microphone is switched off. Uh, 
hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama Hare Hare Jaya Prabhupada Jaya Prabhupada Jaya Prabhupada Jaya Prabhupada Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So today, this morning, we will look at Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 6, Chapter 15, Texts, 
26 through 28. Um, there are no purports for 27 and 28, so we'll just finish the chapter and see what adventure is next. Dasmat Svastena Manasa Vimrishya Gutim Atmana Dvaite Dhruvartha Vishrambham Tyajo Pashamam Avisha Dasmat Svastena Manasa Vimrasha Gutimatmana Dvaite Dhruvartha Vishrambham Tejo Pashamam Avisha Dasmat Svastena Manasa Vimrasya Gatimatmana Dvaite Dhruvartha Vishrambham Tejo Pashama Mavisha Tasmat Svastena Manasa Vimrasya Gatimatmana Dvaite Dhruvartha Vishrambham Tejo Pashamam Mavisha Tasmat was ten a manasa. Vimrishya got him at Manaha. Vite Druvarta Vishrambam. Tajo Pashamam Avisha. Word to word. Tasmat, therefore, Svasthena, with a careful, Manasa, mind, Vimrasya, considering, Gatim, real position, Atmana, of yourself, Dvaite, in the duality, Dhruva, as permanent, Artha, object, 
Vishrambham belief Tyaja give up Upashamam a peaceful condition Abisha take two Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Therefore, O King Chitraketu, carefully consider the position of the Atma. In other words, try to understand who you are, whether body, mind, or soul. Consider where you have come from, where you are going after giving up this body, and why you are under the control of material lamentation. Try to understand your real position in this way, and then you'll be able to give up your unnecessary attachment. You will also be able to give up the belief that this material world or anything not directly in touch with service to Krishna is eternal. Thus you will obtain peace. Responsively, please. Therefore, O King Chitraketu, Carefully consider the position of the Atma. In other words, try to understand who you are, whether body, mind, or soul. Consider where you have come from, where you are going after giving up this body, and why you are under the control of material lamentation. Try to understand your real position in this way, and then you will be able to give up your unnecessary attachment. You will also be able to give up the belief that this material world or anything not directly in touch with service to Krishna is eternal. Thus you will obtain peace. Srila Prabhupada's purport. The Krishna consciousness movement is factually endeavoring to bring human society to a sober condition. Because of a misdirected civilization, people are jumping in materialistic life like cats and dogs performing all sorts of abominable, sinful actions and becoming increasingly entangled. The Krishna consciousness movement includes self-realization because one is first directed by Lord Krishna to understand that one is not the body, but the owner of the body. When one understands this simple fact, he can direct himself toward the goal of life. Because people are not educated in terms of the goal of life, they're working like madmen and becoming more and more attached to the material atmosphere. The misguided man accepts the material condition as everlasting. One must give up his faith in material things and give up attachment for them. Then one will be sober and peaceful. Text 27. Sri Narada Uvacha Etamantro Panisharam Pratit Praticha prayato mama yam dharayam saptaratrad drashta sankarshanam vibhum. The great sage Narada continued, My dear king, attentively receive from me a mantra which is most auspicious. After accepting it from me in seven nights, you will be able to see the Lord face to face. And 28. Yet para mulam upasrit, yet para mulam purve sarvadayo brahma mimam tvitayam vishudya sadhyastadiyam atuladi kam mahitvam prapur bhavan api param nachirabhu paiti 
was trying to avoid that, and I could not. Just going into the Brahma Sanghita tune, because it's the same meter. I sometimes try not to just default to that, because there are other ways to sing that meter. But it took me over. Well, it's useful when we're chanting it responsibly, because everybody knows it. And you don't have to guess it. But when we're not, I don't have to, but I, I got lost. For which, well, I would apologize, but I'm always getting lost, so it seems futile to, pol to apologize. Translation, my dear king, in former days, Lord Shiva and other demigods took shelter of the lotus feet of Sankarsana. They immediately got free from the illusion of duality and achieved unequaled and unsurpassed glories in spiritual life. You will very soon attain that same position. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports of the sixth canto, 15th chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam, entitled, The Saints Narada and Angira Instruct King Chitraketu. Om Magyana Timirandhasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshuran Militang Jena Tasmai Shri Gurave Nama Mukhaṁ karoti vācalaṁ pāṅgūṁ lāṅghāyate girim yatkripā tamahaṁ bandhe śrī gurūṁ dīnatāranam śrī caitanya mano bhīṣṭaṁ sthāpitaṁ yena bhūtale svāyaṁ rūpa kadāmahyaṁ dadāti svapadāntikaṁ namā om viṣṇu pārāya krishna prāṣṭāya bhūtale śrīmate bhakti vedānta svāminiti nāmine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Bancha Kalpa Tarubhyas Chakrapa Sindhubhya Eva Chapatitanam Pavane Pyo Vaishnave Pyo Namo Nama Tasmat Svastena Manasa Vimrshya Gutimatmana Dvaite Druvarta Vishrambham Tyajo Pasamama Vishap. Therefore, O King Chitraketu, carefully consider the position of the Atma. In other words, try to understand who you are, whether body, mind, or soul. Consider where you have come from, where you are going after giving up this body, and why you are under the control of material lamentation. Try to understand your real position in this way, and then you will be able to give up your unnecessary attachment. You will also be able to give up the belief that this material world or anything not directly in touch with service to Krishna is eternal. Thus, you will obtain peace. So this is, um, this is the instruction of the guru. Take a look at that in, in a couple of minutes. Um, the first angas of bhakti are all about um, the, the spiritual master, accepting the shelter of the lotus feet of the spiritual master, um, accepting initiation and instruction from the spiritual master, and serving the spiritual master with vishrambha, which is a word that shows up in this first interesting translation. Um, we'll take a look at that too. So, um, and we'll, we'll take a little closer look at those in just a minute. But I want to back up a few verses because the Context here, I think, is interesting. Maybe I backed up too far. So, if we go back to text 20, Angira says, When I first came to your home, I could have given you the supreme transcendental knowledge, but when I saw that your mind was absorbed in material things, I gave you only a son which caused you jubilation and lamentation. That was his name, right? Harsha Shoka. Joy and lamentation. 
all the parents in the room understand that. Even if the child doesn't die um, untimely, still, there's plenty of joy and there's plenty of lamentation along the way. My dear king, now you're actually experiencing the misery of a person who has sons and daughters. O king, owner of the state of Shurasena, one's wife, his house, the opulence of his kingdom, and his various other opulences and objects of sense perception are all the same in that they are temporary. One's kingdom, military power, treasury, servants, ministers, friends and relatives are all causes of fear, illusion, lamentation, and distress. They're like a Gandharva Nagara, a non-existent palace that one imagines to exist in the forest. Because they are impermanent, they are no better than illusions, dreams, and mental concoctions. These visible objects like wife, children, and property are like dreams and mental concoctions. Manobhava, right? They exist in the mind. Actually, what we see has no permanent existence. It is sometimes seen and sometimes not. Only because of our past actions do we create such mental concoctions, and because of these con concoctions, we perform further activities. The living entity in the bodily conception of life is absorbed in the body, which is a combination of the physical elements, the five senses for gathering knowledge, and the five senses of action along with the mind. Through the mind, the living entity suffers three kinds of tribulations, adhipotika, adhidaivika, and adhyatmika. Therefore, this body is the source of all miseries. Carefully, O king, carefully consider the position of the atma. In other words, try to understand who you are, whether mind, body, or soul. Consider where you have come from, where you are going after giving up this body, and why you are under the control of material lamentation. Try to understand your real position in this way, and then you'll be able to give up your unnecessary attachment. You'll also be able to give up the belief that uh, this material world or anything not in, uh, directly in touch with service to Krishna is eternal. Thus, thus you will obtain peace. The great sage Narada continued, My dear king, attentively receive from me a mantra which is most auspicious. After accepting it from me in seven nights, you will be able to see the Lord face to face. My dear king, in former days, Lord Shiva and other demigods took shelter of the lotus feet of Sankarsana. Thus, they immediately got free of the, from the illusion of duality and achieved unequaled and unsurpassed glories in spiritual life. Thus, you will very soon attain that very same position. So Angira tells him, I came before, but I could see that you were completely immersed in all kinds of material hankering. So I could have given you this transcendental knowledge, but I gave you a son instead. I, g I did what was appropriate. Now, Srila Prabhupada points out in today's purpose, uh, today's purport. Um, he says, the Krishna consciousness movement includes self-realization because one is first directed by Lord Krishna to understand that one is not the body, but the owner of the body. So if we look in Srila Prabhupada's purport to the second verse of chapter 9 of Bhagavad Gita, he makes this distinction between transcendental knowledge, which Krishna gave um, in spades in the second chapter, and the, this most confidential knowledge that Krishna is going to give in the ninth chapter, which is positive knowledge of the soul. Srila Prabhupada says transcendental knowledge is nice, but it doesn't afford us positive knowledge of the soul. There's a lot of Tatastalakshana stuff 
um, going on in self-realization. Not this, not that. There are two um, aspects um, um, uh, of a thing. There's tatasta lakshana and swarupa lakshana. There's marginal characteristics and um, essential characteristics. You might say the thing proper, the thing itself, swarupa, its own form. So tatasta means marginal. Um, so there's secondary characteristics. And quite often um, they are... Uh, defining something by what it's not. For example, um, the uh, definition um, of pure devotional service that Srila Rupa Goswami gives in the second chapter of the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Anyabhilashita shunyam jnana karmadhyanavritam anukulyena krishnana shilaram bhakti ruttama. So that first line, those first two padas, that, that's the tatasta lakshana. That's helping us define um, pure devotional service by what it's not. Anyabhilashitashun, unencumbered by any false values. Jnana, karma, adi, the, the aspiration for the liberation that jnana affords us, for the um, material progress and pleasure that karma affords us, and for the realization that yoga affords us. We don't want any of these things. These things are all in the way. They're all impediments. They cloud, they muddy the water, right? They make it murky. This is a, one of the first words I learned when I was a little boy. My father was a scuba diver. So I learned about murky water and clear water um, very early on. Um, my dad, no, actually, my dad was a scuba diver before it was known as scuba diving. When my dad started in the 40s, it was known as skin diving. And even the magazine was called Skin Diver. Look it up. Um, so, if we want a clear, if we want a clear definition of what uh, devotional service is, we also, it's also helpful to understand what needs to be excluded. Right? What it's not. So it's not encumbered by anything having to do with anything other, as Srila Prabhupada says, um, or actually as the verse says, right, um, than direct service to Krishna. So, um, so that's, you know, that's a definition. This is also, this is something that I taught um, to like beginning writing students when I was teaching in colleges and universities, um, you know, when I would have them, especially the, the like the pre-collegiate writing classes, which I think are probably have pretty much much been weeded out because of um, financial considerations. Um, uh, when when we write definition, um, one of the strategies is to show us what it's not, exclude that. So we see that, these secondary ca characteristics. In the Swarupa Lakshana, uh, Anukulyena Krishna uh, Anushilanam. So engaging on, in an ongoing and progressive way in activities that are intended to give pleasure to Krishna. And there's a whole discussion of just what that means in um, Jiva Goswami's commentary. Uh, and we see some of that discussion in the Nectar of Devotion as well. So, we have the, you know, these, um, these uh, direct and, you know, these uh, primary and secondary. So he says, anything that's not directly in touch with service to Krishna is eternal. Now, Krishna tells us at the end of the Bhagavad Gita, sarva dharman parityajya mamekam saranam praja. Give up, completely reject, run away from anything everything else, every conventional idea of dharma. Completely reject these things and take shelter in me exclusively. And the Bhagavatam picks up kind of in the next step. Dharma projita kaitavatra paramo niramat saranam satam. For those who have already, it's in the past, for those who have already given up all these conventional kinds of religion. But the language used in the Bhagavatam is even stronger. Kaitava dharma, right? Cheating religion. 
And when Krishnadas Kavi Raj Goswami cites this verse um, in the 22nd chapter of Mati Lila, Lord Chaitanya's instructions on uh, the process, actually the first part of the chapter he talks about faith and surrender, and, su and surrender, sharanagati, sharanapati is actually, according to Bhaktivinoda Thakur, the external symptom of faith, shraddha. Right? Shraddha shabde vishvas kohi sudhardhanas choy krishne bhakti koile sarva karma krita. Shraddha means the firm conviction. Shraddha shabde vishvas, the conviction, but not just conviction, the very firm conviction. Sudhardhanas choy. That krishna bhakti koile sarva karma krita hoy. That everything is accomplished simply by taking to krishna bhakti. And how do we express that? by accepting only things that are favorable for our culture of bhakti and neglecting or rejecting those things that aren't. By um, seeing uh, that uh, Krishna will protect me in all circumstances. By making Krishna my sole maintainer. By becoming meek and humble. And by giving up, throw, casting away, atmani kshepa, all self-interest, casting away. I remember once I was discussing this with uh, my godbrother Pundarik Vidya Nidhi um, in, when I was in Alachua. And I, and I said, I want to I, I ask you about Nikshepa. And he says, means casting it away, throwing it away. Parityajya, projhita, completely giving all these things up. Um, so, um, that's the external expression of, of that, um, of that uh, faith. Uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur writes about that in his Jaiva Dharma. Um, so how do we do that? How do we engage in devotional service? Here, we see the key here at the end of this chapter. Angira Muni is finally acting as a real guru because he says Angira is ready. Before, he was just hankering. Was hankering for a son so that he could have an heir and everything would be cool. Um, but then what happens? You know, he says, why are you in the clutches of material lamentation? Because there was so much hankering before. We build up expectations about what our life is going to be, and life disappoints most of us. And those of us that doesn't seem to disappoint, we end up getting it in the teeth later on, we end up getting it later, uh, 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 you know, toward the end. So, he says, now you're experienced. Now you know what the deal is. And he says, tasmat, now, let's do something serious. Now try to consider really, se very seriously who you are. This was Sanatana Goswami's inquiry when he approached Lord Chaitanya. Who am I, after all? Who am I really? And why in the world, same question, right? Why am I uh, subjected to these various miseries, these threefold miseries? And implied in that is, how do I get out of this? King Parikshit's, King Parikshit's inquiry, pretty much the same. Okay, this is it. What's the most important thing for us to attend to? What's the duty, as my friend Kusha likes to say, what is the duty of a man who is about to die? And that's all of us, because we don't know. We may think, oh yeah, I've got another whatever years. I'm only, I'm only 30 years old. I had a friend uh, when I was in high school. I had a friend who died in his 20s. He had bad health his whole life, but he didn't make it to 30. Our friend Akshobhya, one day with us, the next day, no Akshobhya at Mangalarti. Instead, an announcement. Just a heartbreaking announcement that our friend Akshobhya had been killed the night before. Maybe around 30. I think we, you know, I don't remember exactly where Akshobhya, his, his age was with mine. But this was 79. So he was late 20s, early 30s. Um, just the other, just a few weeks ago, a month or so ago, one of our devotees in Honolulu, Dr. Craig, who'd been coming to the temple in Honolulu for 30 years. He came there from New Vrindavan, um, thinking he would live on uh, the temple's sailboat and work on that for the rest of his life. 
found out he got seasick or something and ended up taking another path. Um, and he worked as a plumber, had his own plumbing business for many, many years. And for all those years, he would always take care of whatever plumbing needs the temple had. On call. If something happened at night, call Craig. He'll come. And every morning, every single morning, but sometime between 5 and 5.30, he would show up in his truck at the temple, sit out in the gazebo in the yard, and chant his rounds. And then one day, we noticed Friday morning, we didn't see Craig. Well, you know, that's possible. Guy was in his 60s. You know, you have rough mornings. But Saturday, still no Craig. Sunday, no Craig. And then we found out that he'd been found dead in his apartment. So, and, and nobody saw that coming, probably least of all Craig. So we're thinking, yeah, I'm good. But, um, you know, now Angira's got, um, he's got experience. Now he knows that all the plans that we make for this material world, the bigger plans we make, the more likely we are to be, uh, and the more likely we, are, likely we are to be disappointed, and the greater the disappointment is likely to be. So, tasmat, now. So we see the same word in the 11th canto of the Bhagavatam. I can never keep the Nabi Yogendra straight. A friend of mine made me a, a graphic that would help me remember. And, and I haven't memorized that graphic. Do you, do you remember Dravida? Tasmat gurum prapadyeta. Hubby or Kavi, I think. Yeah, it's... Tasmad gurum, so we see in the 11th canto, a very famous verse. Tasmad gurum prapadyeta jigyasu shaya uttama shabde parecha nishnatam brahmanyu prashamashrayam. Therefore, any person who seriously desires real happiness must seek a bona fide spiritual master and take initiation, uh, take shelter of him by initiation. The qualified uh, the qualification of the bona fide guru is that he's realized the conclusion of the scriptures by deliberation and is able to convince others of these conclusions. Such great personalities who've taken shelter of the supreme personality of Godhead. Leaving aside all material consideration, amnyabhilashita sunyam, dharma prochitakarti, sarva dharman paritya right? Um, oh, this is Prabhupada, thank you. So he's the third of, I think, of the say. I think there's Kavi, Havi, and Prabuddha. Thank you. Um, such great personalities who have taken shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, leaving aside all material considerations, should be considered bona fide spiritual masters. Starts with this word, tasmat. And just before that, he explains the whole scam of the material world in just a few verses, showing how Everything that we attain, that we uh, aspire for in this material world, including the most intense, immersive of pleasures, sex, is going to let you down. You're going to be disappointed. And then he says, therefore, any person who seriously desires real happiness must take shelter of a bona fide spiritual master. So there's an antecedent. When you've got a tasmat, there's an ante. There's something before that. And so, again, it's the same thing. It's this understanding. For those who've understood the farce, the sham, the scam of this material world, they need to take shelter of a spiritual master. Other people, maybe not so much. Although sometimes, Lord Chaitanya is so kind. Sometimes he even disrupts our sojourn through, through the material world. Uh, but Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur explains generally how bhakti works at the beginning of his Madhurya Kadambani. He first has a, a posits an argument for how independent Krishna is, which is absolutely independent. And he does so to make the point that bhakti is every bit as independent as Krishna. She goes where she darn well pleases. But here's how she chooses to do it. She takes shelter in the hearts of those devotees who accept her. And 
when the Madhyama bhaktas among them, the intermediate bhaktas among them, intermediate bhaktas because they're able to properly discriminate who's ready to hear this, like Angira. Angira saw, he could feel uh, Chitraketu's heart. Guy's not ready yet. He's not ready for the real deal. So we'll give him something. We'll let him, give him a lesson. Let him, have, let him have what he wants. Careful what you wish for, right? We'll let him have what he wants and see how that works out. Not so great. You know, he's, oh, my son, you know, don't you remember me, your father? And, and, and you know, Harsha Shok is like, which father? You know, I had so many fathers and mothers, can't keep track of them. It's even worse than the Navyogendras. Um, so many mothers and fathers. Um, so, I mean, you know, I heard, Someone was telling us uh, recently in, in a class in Honolulu, can't remember who now, um, when uh, Shiva was asked by Parvati why he wears a garland of skulls. And he said, oh, those are all your skulls. Oh, geez. And she says, what? You mean, yes, yep. <laughs> You've been born and died so many times, and uh, I've just kind of been collecting. I can't remember the source for that, and I don't even remember who mentioned it in class, but it was someone um, fairly reliable. Although it was interesting because I was just looking at a letter from Srila Prabhupada to artists, and he said not to depict Shiva wearing a garland of skulls. So I'm not sure. He didn't. He was just answering questions, like it was number six or something like that. Um, so, um, so this is the real business. This is our real business as um, sp oh, rats, spiritual aspirants. And um, the clock betrayed me again. But I wanted, I wanted to dwell on this business of accepting the spiritual master just a little bit more, um, because... Um, in chapter 2, at the beginning of chapter 2, um, just um, when uh, Rupa Goswami begins to list the 64 main angas of sadhana bhakti, he, he gives us the first ones. He says, um, Guru, Pada, uh, Guru Pada Shayas Tasmat Krishna, shik, uh, Krishna Dikshari Shikshanam Vishram Bhena Guru Seva Sadhu Vartmanu Vartanam so we see the first three items of devotional service are taking shelter of the guru, accepting initiation and instruction from the guru, and serving the guru with vishrampa. This is a very interesting word because it has many uh, meanings depending on the context. Srila Prabhupada here uh, uh, in today's verse uses, uh, translates it as belief. But it also means, uh, it can mean respect, um, it can mean affection. It can mean intimacy. And um, in the third canto, uh, where we see uh, Devahuti's relationship with Kardamamuni being described, it says she serves him with Vishrampa. And in his purport to that, with intimacy. Uh, she's serving Kardamamuni intimately. And in his purport, Srila Prabhupada says that you know, in the dealings between a husband and wife, the service should be done in intimacy, but also with some gaurava, some reverence. Now that can go both ways. Actually, it's a lot better if the husband actually reveres the wife, understands her good character, and appreciates it, and also serves. You know, we, we know that in the uh, Gita Govinda, um, was it Jayadev, Jay, Jayadev got a vision of, of Krishna bathing or taking the dust from Radharani's lotus feet. And he said, whoa, that can't be right. Went away to think about it and came back. And it was revealed to him somehow. I don't remember the story off the top of my head, but it was revealed to him. This is the real understanding. Oh, it was pointed out by his wife, something, something by his wife. So somewhere in Gita Govinda, there's actually a verse where he offers respect to his wife, taking, the, taking shelter, taking the dust of Padmavati, his wife's, lotus feet, um, because somehow she pointed this out to him, that Krishna was, actually does 
But somebody was asking me yesterday, why are you guys all a bunch of male chauvinists? Why don't you ever talk about Radharani? I posted a picture of Krishna playing with the cowherd boys with a quotation from Gopal Champu saying that uh, Goloka is Vaikuntha with forests. And, and the cow sheds there are made of Chintamani. And this one devotee said, well, why are you guys, why are you male chauvinist guys? You always got to talk about, why don't you ever talk about Radharani? And, and, and I said, well, I don't, I, I'm not sure. I mean, that doesn't have anything to do with this, with these verses that I quoted from Gopal Champu, but we talk about Radharani a lot. So then I posted a, a depiction of the symbols on Radharani's lotus feet and then a picture of Krishna bathing Radharani's lotus feet. And I thought, okay, how's that? We good now? <laughs> um, so these three, actually, these, these are among the first 20 angas that are listed. The first 10 are vidhi, and the te second 10 are nishedhas. And the vidhi means rules, nishedha means prohibitions. So it's the do's and don'ts, 10 do's, 10 don'ts. So these are very preliminary because at the end of that list, Rupa Goswami says, these 20 items constitute the entrance to the temple of bhakti. In other words, we don't have full access to the other angas of bhakti except by the grace of the spiritual master. And this is a very serious business. We should take it very seriously. Um, Srila Prabhupada, in, when, when this, uh, he discusses Guru Tattva in the first chapter of uh, Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, uh, Srila Prabhupada says that we shouldn't take uh, we shouldn't accept a spiritual master based uh, on the basis of uh, family, social, or um, ecclesiastical considerations. It's not an official relationship. It's a, it should be a real relationship. There should be real bishrambha, real affection between the guru and the disciple. Um, and that reverence. So Srila Prabhupada says, this is also the characteristic of the, of the disciple's service to the spiritual master. It should also be characterized by both Gaurava and Vishrambha, both reverence and intimacy. Now, not the kind of familiarity that might breed contempt, but progressive intimacy, intimacy to the extent that eventually the disciple will be able to anticipate the guru's needs. The guru doesn't need to ask for a cup of water. The disciple knows when that's, or whatever it is. Prabhupada often described different classes of servants, right? First class, second class, third class servant. First class servant knows what the guru wants, anticipates his or her needs. Second class servant, as soon as the guru says, I need a glass of water, brings it. Third class servant, going to think about it. Maybe a glass of kefir. Maybe seven up. Maybe Perrier. Maybe not water. Maybe Kier. Well, if he's asking for a glass of water, it's because he's thirsty. Kier's not going to do that. Kier's going to lift the top off his head. So that's a whole different thing. Um, well, if you have a whole cup. I've been there. Just ask my poor liver. Um, so. This is, you know, this is really the core of our business, you know, the, the real core uh, business that, that devotees have is taking seriously uh, the business of finding the right spiritual master for us, um, where there really is mutual affection and respect. Um, so, and so that they uh, ultimately, they need to, you know, we need a relationship where they can read each other's hearts. The spiritual master can see what the disciple needs and give instruction and provide engagement accordingly. And the, and the disciple will be able to at least readily accept the guru's instruction, if not anticipate them. Um, so this is kind of what we see at the end here. Angirda Muni, um, you know, understanding Chitraketu's real situation earlier in, the cha you know, earlier in, in this lila, uh, you know, gives him what's appropriate so that he can learn a lesson. And then after having learned that lesson, he says, okay, now let's get serious. Your real business in human life is to figure out who you really are and why you are so much in the throes of lamentation. 
Muktaram Jagya Tapasam Sarvaloka Mahesham Maheshwaram Suhridang Sarabhutanam Gyatva Mam Shantam Richidi. Another version of Krishna's peace formula. Um, I'll stop here uh, for any discussion in the remaining time. Dravida Prabhu. Just one note about that, that verse, the Dasmad Guru Mbapadjaita, mm. which Prabhupada quoted so extensively, you know, and the, the need to approach a guru, that's one of the main verses. And, and having, you know, and, you know, I knew that verse for years, and it, and it begins with a the therefore, and I said, well, what comes before? Because there's an argument before there, you know, so I looked it up, and it was, and in, th- in th- I think three or four verses, as you, as you, as you he dismisses, he, sh- he explains how uh, you cannot attain any uh, happiness in the material world. And he begins, as you, as you, you mentioned, with uh, the sex life. That people get together, and the whole, you know, on the basis of sex life. But we should always understand that you get exactly the opposite of what you, what you would hope for. Right. And then uh, he goes with money. Money is a big thing. Nityarti dena means it is, it is always a, a, a source of misery. If you have it, you know, you, I've got to increase it. I've got to protect it. If you don't have it, then it's... it's and then he talks about the heavenly planets. Even if you go to the heavenly planets, there's still, as we've experienced in the, la- in, in the last chapters, there's still the danger that the, the competition with the advanced demons and so forth, and so you can't be peaceful there and everything like that. And then he says, therefore, if you want the ultimate good, Shreya Uttamam, you have to be Rosh Hashanah, and then he goes on from there. Covers the whole, the whole range of material experience. Yeah. And, and it's typical you know, uh, Yogendras, you know, very concise, and eight yeah. or nine verses, and there's a whole complete lesson there. It's very great. Itam cha sarang cha vacho hivagmitaha. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Vijay Krishna Prabhu? Yes, Maharaj. May I? Yes, please. Maharaj? Uh, if it's especially, if, especially if I can provide a brief response, because Krishna is waiting for all of us in another form right now. Yes, Maharaj, of course. I'll Thank try you. my best. Uh, you're, you're most welcome. Maharaj, uh, the purport to text 26 deals with Srila Prabhupada explaining about being sober. Hmm. And Lord Krishna chants to Arjun that to be sober is the same as not becoming be- bewildered by the successive changes the material body passes from boyhood to death. And some people call us, Hare Krishnas, not different from fanatics because we do not accept procedures like, like euthanasia and assisted suicide. So based on all of this, my question is, um, how to remain uh, sober while experiencing the unbearable pain caused by a terminal disease uh, like cancer or any disease of the sort, uh, in order to and, and remaining sober in order to avoid procedures like eu- euthanasia and, and assisted suicide because as soon as you make use of these uh, procedures you stop being sober ah good point thank you um, it's an essential You're welcome. it's an essential question how do we how do we remain dhira undisturbed in the most disturbing situation and one, we, we get examples more and more frequently now as, as more of us get close to 30. Um, it's not even a good joke anymore. Um, one example that, uh, that, uh, that's always on my mind is our sister and everyone's dear friend, Mula Prakriti. When she was in Vrindavan, um, breathing her last, um, Sangeeta, my friend Sangeeta told me that um, at the very end, uh, she was practic- it was, she's finding it, she was laboring very hard to breathe and she was finding it very difficult. And right at the very end, there was kind of like a moment of alarm. I was going to say panic, but I think that might be, you know, it's just like when you, you actually, you're, it's like you're drowning in the lung, in the fluid in your lungs. And she was gasping. And Sangeeta just touched her very gently, and she said, it's okay, let Srila Prabhupada do the breathing. 
And Mula was able to let go and very peacefully give up her life in the middle of that um, kirtan, give up that body in the middle of that kirtan. So it really, it really amounts to this uh, process of sharanapati or sharanagati, actually taking shelter of the Lord, um, understanding that um, that He gives us sh shelter from um, from beginning to end, just as we see in, in in the life of Draupadi when she was in the direst of of, of, uh, of situations. Um, with Dushasana trying to disrobe her in the subha in front of everybody. And everybody's sitting on their hands uh, because, they're, you know, they're just trying to figure out the, all the rules here, you know. Well, does she belong to us? Does she belong to herself? Does she belong to the what You know, they didn't know what to do. Even Bhishma was, seemed to be stumped. Nobody uh, could save her. And she was trying to save herself. And when she saw the futility of that endeavor, she just threw her arms up. Hey, Govinda. She just gave herself to Krishna. Okay, this is, <laughs> I'm, ob I mean, you know, who's going to fight, be able to fight this Hulk anyway, you know? Who can resist that? And then Krishna, when she took shelter of Krishna. Uh, it's like the trust fall. When we have, uh, when we would have, um, workshops at the beginning of, a, of, of an academic year at the different colleges that I taught at. Um, you, know, you do these team building exercises, one day is for team building exercises, and one of them is the trust fall, where you stand up straight, put your arms out, you close your eyes, and you just lean back. And you have to have uh, some faith that, that your partner is, go is going to catch you. And not going to just let you hit the floor. Now, who's going to do that anyway? You know, in the room with the whole, you know, your whole department, or maybe like when, when I taught at Hawaii Community College, we have a small enough faculty there that it was actually the entire faculty, all 90 some of us or something like that. Wouldn't be able to do it like that at San Diego State, where they have thousands of faculty members. But so that, you know, kind of trust in Krishna. Krishna will always. Rakshisha Titi Vishwasa, the conviction that Krishna will always protect me in all circumstances. So surrender is, is, the, is, you know, is the real thing. Whatever it is, the conviction that whatever it is I have to go through, there may be pain, there may be difficulty breathing, uh, you know, maybe the death rattle, which is very distressing for everyone in the room. I experienced that at the end of my father's um, journey. Um, but uh, whatever it is, um, it's temporary. It'll pass. And Krishna will help me through it. Is that okay? Is that a good start? Oh, Maharaj, as to be expected, better than okay. Again, very helpful. Uh, if I may, no, no, no. I'm speechless because brilliant, very pleasing to the heart answer to my question. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Chai, thank you. Thank you for your wonderful question. Grantaraja Srimad Bhagavatam Kijai Gaurabhakta Vrinda Kijai.